everybody, Brother Nero here, and some of you may remember, I used to regularly, you know, uh, sit here and play uh, videos featuring the butt nuts who would ring in to LBC, and uh, gradually over the course of a very short period of time, lose my patience in a rather extreme way. And you seem to enjoy that as I remember, so I thought, let's do it again. Enjoy. Now this first guy, he's going to explain to us why, how, you know, we, uh, how we heal the country uh, as a result after after Brexit uh, has turned out to be. Let me just check my notes. Uh, bad. Um, I, I think it's time we started talking about healing and moving forward together as a country. Really. But... Right. Well, moving forward is you know, talk about healing. Let's talk about healing because when I get that feeling. Let's talk about healing. Oh, you fuck off. Were you Tony Robbins? Well, you've, got to you've got to acknowledge the wounds first, haven't you? Yeah, I think we do, but also you have to acknowledge... He's got a fucking wound that goes across there. Yeah. So in 2016... You've seen fucking RP McMurphy at the end of fucking... You can argue the rights and the of the votes. But we, we can argue the rights and all. Look, we don't need to talk about... Look, you know, it's, it's, you know, let's not get bogged down in who was right and who was wrong. You were wrong. Have you ever known a football match? Like, let's look at an election like a football match. One side wins, one side loses. Have you ever seen a football match that was heatly, hotly contested, big rivalry, and years later, the people who won don't want you to talk about it? Don't bring it up. Never happens, does it? Weird, that, isn't it? You were given the vote, and ultimately democracy prevailed. You know, whether you like the result or not, democracy prevailed. It. No one's... In Nazi Germany, mate. Uh, I'm allowed to think, well, that come was on, a... Come on, come on. We're not in Nazi Germany. We are treating the... Look, we're not in Nazi Germany. I mean, A, we don't speak German. And, yeah, that'll do. The, you know, the phrase democracy prevailed, focusing exclusively on that as non alloyed good, I love how that guy thought with the James James O'Brien was saying that you know oh well, you know the, the, the you know we don't live in Nazi Germany James you know we have free number of true people voted for things that have not happened which many of us explained would never happen but they in good faith and through no fault of their own believe that they might so how do we heal well we heal by uh, hopefully people like yourself the media generally accepting that um, you know it's not perfect I, I don't certainly have I, I was fortunate to go to us Listen, nobody, listen, I don't know one person who denies that the vote was what it was. I, I will tell you, yes, you what your side won. I'm not fucking denying that. That's got nothing to do with the conversation now. If anything, I'm amazed that people, why are people like me pissed off? When it should, people like you should be even more pissed off. We're not just going to sweep this under the rug. Michael Gove, right, we've got to listen to both sides of the argument. Then we all accept that they weren't completely truthful, and we all accept that there's a degree of animal. Don't, don't talk about, I listen to both sides of the argument, like that's a fucking, like you're special, mate. Uh, we all, lots of people listen to both sides of the argument. And yes, Michael Gove and David Cameron, if, you, if the both sides of the argument you were listening to was Gove and Cameron, then no wonder, because they were shit. I will admit that, they were fucking awful. Right? But they didn't win. And you can't go back and say, well, look, they told lies, we all told lies. This is Tim Paul bullshit. No, 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 I'm sorry. I appreciate you're still sort of in, 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 in the first state of, of grief, but... No, I'm not in grief. No, no, no. I don't know all the negative impact of the pandemic. It's not, it's not going perfectly. According to the sums, the people that do the sums that the entire budget is built on, the long-term negative impact is going to be twice as bad as the worst pandemic the world has seen in living memory. So it's not, oh, some of this went well and some of it went badly. If you want to heal, mate, you've got to start telling the truth. I agree, completely. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how badly is it going compared to how well you thought it would go when you voted for it? Oh God! Every time Brexit, every time you fucking lay out to, to, you talk to someone who voted Brexit on this show. Every time you lay it out, why it's why it's shit, and why it's bad, 
they will always come back here. Well, I personally thought that it was going to be... I thought that we were going to be plummeted. I thought we would be, you know, just plummeted into a fucking absolute national catastrophe for at least a good ten years, and then things would level themselves out. You know... As if that makes you some fucking... Oh, thanks, Nostradamus. You you mean you knew this was going to happen and you still voted for it? That's even worse. In the real, and it takes five to, five to eight years to turn the corner. To, 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 how do you feel about the fact that it's sinking? I don't think it's sinking. I, I, so think, think, I don't think it's sink. Well, it's five to eight years. Well, how long has it been now? It's been three, isn't it? Still in denial. I, I think you're making perception. No, 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 I'm going by the OBR forecast that the entire budget is built on. I've explained this at some length already. OBR? I didn't know old dirty bastard was in charge. I, I listen, I, yeah. I also work in finance. So. I work in finance. Yeah, that's a wonderfully vague, that. What do you do? Do they let you count the fucking two peas up at the tuck shop, you fuck? What do you mean, I work in finance? It's so much when someone says, I work in construction. No, you're a fucking builder. I'm a tree surgeon. You're a fucking gardener. Right? I'm a frontal orifice displacement officer. You're a fucking bouncer. Stop trying to make you... Right? Cunt, I work in finance. I, I, I think you have to give it an opportunity to work. Yes, but... We have to give an opportunity. You said five to eight. So we've got to sit here with our thumbs up our asses and wait. So if it's still shit in five years, then can we call you back? They've said it's been given an opportunity to work and the long term negative impact will be twice as bad as COVID. That's co twice as bad as COVID. That's COVID 38. I, I said, well, it's only history will judge. Oh, only history will judge. Well, let's just fucking wait then, shall we? Enough time, but no. How long? Only history will judge. God, the last person to make that argument was George W. Bush. Five years' time. So you're, so you're thinking, well, don't pay too much attention to what the OBR are saying, in which case, why do we have a budget built? Only history will judge. We're living through history. This is the history of the future. On the OBR. It's a question. Why do we have a budget built upon OBR forecasts if there's no point trusting OBR forecasts, Carl? Because some of the budget is smoke and mirrors, as we all know. It's smoke and mirrors. You work in finance? How many fucking bored aches have you bought? Okay, right, right. But your, vote, but your vote for Brexit was clear eyed and clever. I never said it was clear eyed. Oh, so it wasn't clear. I never said it was clear eyed and clever. Well, was it? Don't you think that's important? Uh, right, let's go back to the question of healing then. Well, what does healing look like while people like you are still talking twaddle? Well, this is healing. It's coming over the radio, isn't it? You're saying I'm talking twaddle, but I respect your view. You should respect mine. I don't respect... I respect your view? No, you don't. You should respect... I respect your right to have the view. I don't respect it. And your view because it's been proved wrong. You thought Brexit would improve my country. It's making everything work. What's to respect in that, Carl? Believe me, I'm still being polite to you, not the other way around. Oh, for fuck's sake, we get back to this fucking tired bit of, oh, well, can't we be polite? I'm being polite and civil. Well, boll bollocks to your civility. You're the side that complains about bloody snowflakes and everyone's offended, right? And yet you can't handle fucking some, you know, a load of... SJW beta cuck males fucking disagreeing with you. It, 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 I'm not here to be your fucking mate. Right, you you have very little that. choice but to be polite. Uh, tell me what I should respect about the view that you have that Brexit would improve my country and my life. You accept that we would... No, no, right? respect. What should I respect about that view? That, I, that, that you should respect that I went into the booth and followed my democratic rights. But what should I That's the best you've got, is it? You went into a booth and followed your democratic right. So fucking what? Respect about your view that my life and my country would be improved. Look, at the time of the day, well, the problem is we're going back over all ground, don't we? No? Okay, okay, don't bring up old business. But we're not. 
that's a brand new question. I've never spoken to you. What should I respect about your view that my country and my life would be improved? Because I'd love to heal. So what should I respect about that view? That given the time and given the information we were provided and the key was we were... No, I... That is just a... Con that's him conceding that he... I mean, is that as close? That's as close as you're going to get. But is that? Does that not sound like he's saying, "Well, at the time and the information I was given, oh, so you were wrong." That's okay. Had the same information as you, mate, and I knew this was going to happen. So that's you did not have the same information as him, James. Doesn't fly. What should I respect about your view that my country and my life and my children's future would be improved by the thing you voted for? Okay. Well, first and foremost, you've obviously had the, the brilliance of foresight that the rest of us did. No, mate, I just, uh, I just had my eyes open. What should I respect about your view that this would be good for me, for my country, my future, and my children? Just give me okay. one thing I should respect about that view, Carl. As, well, as I just said, we're getting over old ground, aren't we? That no, no, we can't go over... Don't bring up old business! We're old ground until we've been on it once. You haven't given me one thing that I should respect, and I'm going to give you one more go. Okay, one more go. Mate, and then this guy rang up! To give good, and he's got nothing. He can't. He's not even bothering to make shit up. But you should, res you should respect that I was given a democratic vote. We do. You had it. We cannot. Even if we didn't respect it, we can't take that away from you. The people who vote, the people who still vote for the National Front, are doing the same fucking thing. Should we respect that? And I follow That's not your view. The view that you have that my country would be improved, that my life would be enhanced, that the economy would be benefiting okay. and my children's future would be better. That was your view. You want me to respect it. I'm happy to if you give me one tiny scintilla of a reason why I should. Okay. My, my view at the time, in the short term, I know we'd go through some short term pain, which we're currently doing. No, we're, we're going through. That wasn't, the, that wasn't on the menu when we fucking vo you voted. No, I didn't hear one person saying, oh, it's going to be fuck weird. Oh, it's going to be shit for a while. But hang in there. For double the negative impact of COVID for the rest of our lives. So what should I respect about your view? But COVID is a separate issue. He's not talking about COVID, you fucking cretinous pillock. What should I respect about your view, Carl? Give me one thing that I should respect about your view that has been proved horribly and spectacularly wrong. That I was prepared to take a long term view on the outcome of this country. So but you go further enough in fucking f in the future, mate, everything works out in the end. You could say, if you'd look forward to, well, in 500 years' time, everything will be fucking better, doesn't, doesn't justify everything that went. If something good, you know, if a Jewish geezer wins the lottery based on the numbers that fucking Hitler tattooed onto his fucking wrist, it doesn't justify the Holocaust, does it? Well, the OBR, mate, 4% four, four damage to, to GDP. That's the OBR's long-term view. I'm interested in your view that you demand I respect. I want one reason why I should respect it. Uh, the, the very fact that we're on the radio having this conversation. Oh, well, that's it, isn't it? Because if, obviously, if Remain had won, this this show wouldn't have continued. It would just be, we would just be sat here and for ten for three hours Monday to Friday it would just be James O'Wyan violently wanking everywhere, wouldn't it? Probably would actually. Now before we carry on, folks, just want to say my name is Dick Coughlin and YouTube is my only source of income. Forget it for reasons that are not you know I don't want to get into because I don't want to be accused of emotionally manipulating you. I'm disabled and. You know, uh, so you know what I what I would appreciate is if you could like this video, you know, post a comment, share it around, maybe, you know, favorite it, you know, tell your friends. But you know, if you could support me on Patreon, that would be amazing, right? And uh, other than that, now let's get on with the show. Oh, raid shadow lip. I'm joking. This next guy is going to defend the government's plan to send uh, asylum seekers to Rwanda. Jim's in Watford. Jim, what would you like to say? It's always Jim in Watford. It's always some monosyllabic abbreviation of a of an English name in some beige fucking concrete shithole. Uh, hello, James. Uh, well, one potential way of looking at this... One potential way, because I don't have the actual confidence to fully commit to this one. Is, yes, we've got immigration in this country. We've got to offer these people a very safe and secure way of... Um, seeking asylum and going through the natural process then of whether they're... The natural process? Legitimate or not. But perhaps 
one element to look at here is purely the but cost of it. And by all accounts, it's costing five million pounds a day. So five million a day, 365 days in the year, that's just under two billion. So when you take the... Sorry, what, what is Which in actual sort of, you know, national... You know, you know, monetary terms is fuck all. It's what's costing that? So, by all accounts, the government. Well, what you say? Well, see, people with an anti-immigration bias, they always look fucking things. They always look to. They they always look at the the they only they only look at the facts that actually sound bad in, in this way. So they always say it's costing us two billion. It's like what's it bringing in in terms of immigration? If you're talking about immigration, not that immigration is asylum seeking. Uh, you know, that, that's a completely different thing. But you know, immigration is a net positive. It's a profit. <laughs> By all accounts, I don't mean which accounts. Well, the government actually declared, says that immigration costs five million pounds a day. No, it doesn't. I mean, Im immigration is a is a net positive for the British economy. You must be talking about a specific. No, no, looking after asylum seekers. Well, that's nothing to do with immigration, is it? That's what did I just say? You know, see, immigration. See, everybody who said that? Me. Who was right? Yes, yeah, financial I was right. They make to the country. So if you want to, by all accounts, it. We'd have to do a calculation there, wouldn't we? And also, I'm very much in favour of letting asylum seekers work, as they are permitted to do in other countries, in which case the cost becomes zero overnight. So we've solved that problem. I have no problem with that. But! If, if one thing actually proves who they are and what they are, because... Uh, what do you mean, what they are? Well, we know who you are. But what are you? Uh, they can work. They can work. They can work while they're. Well. I don't know about you, but I think sending them to Rwanda in the meantime. I don't know what a one, what a fucking plane flight to Rwanda costs. But sure, we're going to give them at least even that much, right, just a replacement bus service from fucking Heathrow to Rwanda. But I, I would probably hazard a guess that you know it's probably cheaper. It's probably more expensive to fly someone to another country, and then then it is. To spend fuck all. Well, the application is good. Also, what if they're coming from Rwanda? That's going to be a kick in the bollocks, isn't it? Process. Well, I work in the military. In other countries. And, in other countries. Well, you know, I work in the military. And Again, another vague job. I work in the military. It doesn't say what, doing what. Fucking, you're turning a barrel on a Thursday. He's got fucking, he peels spuds. He's got nothing. See, here come the police coming for me. Right? Nothing. Right? He's. And it's, this is a meaningless thing. He's bringing it up. I'm in the military. As if that means anything. You might as well have said, well, I'm a Capricorn and my, my brother-in-law is Chinese. And, you know, part of my role is to keep this country safe. Yeah. So, right, but it's not in this case, is it? Is that why you're phoning up LBC? By doing that, you, when you're actually seeing people actually rolling up on your doorsteps, yeah. without... You see me rolling, seeking... ...paperwork... And there is an with their paperwork. Well, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're not. You've escaped a war-torn shitter where you were going to be put to death. But uh, did you bring your fucking paper? Did you bring the forms? Well, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're not going to go through the application process, are they? Under your scheme, they're just going to disappear into the black economy. Well, that's racist. No, and that, and that of course, won't cost the country anything. Not at all. But anybody that's arriving in this country without yeah. pay, without paperwork. Oh my God! This geezer is obsessed with fucking paperwork. Let me guess. What's your military job? I've never seen a soldier so obsessed with. Let me guess. Let me guess. You're, you're like Sergeant Darling from Blackadder, aren't you? But seeking asylum, for instance. Yes. For instance, that's the topic of conversation. You need to put them through a process. Now, one way of looking at this. As opposed to what? What? Like, as opposed to going, oh, certainly come in, come in, Habib. Yes, with your wives and your twenty-seven kids. There's a free house waiting for you and five hundred thousand fucking pounds a week benefit. Don't worry. You know, we will phone the Daily Mail immediately. What success could be like is to reduce the cost of that. Well, you keep you keep going on about this, but reduce the cost. These geezers arrive like with one sock on. Having, nav having navigated a fucking hellscape of fucking, you know, crossing oceans and deserts and war zones, fleeing for their lives. And you're giving them shit because they didn't fucking bring, you know, oh, I didn't bring my fucking post office book. The, 
cost of sending them to Rwanda as opposed to letting them work while they're being processed here. Have you seen the train tickets to Rwanda? Immeasurably higher. Well, I mean, you sound, I'm sure you don't mean to, but you sound like someone who's desperately trying to come up with a theory does, that doesn't and James O'Brien knows this, he's To lying. justify something that actually appeals to you on a more base level. But I'm sure you're not. I'm, no, absolutely. I'm sure you're not. You're, sure you're you not. are. You are. You are. That's what you sound like. It's just one way of looking at it. But it isn't, though, is it's, it? It's just one way of looking at it. Well, here's another way. I need to start giving the finger more. What? We've just established that, that this is a pointless argument which is why it sounds a little this is pretty much the fucking synopsis of the entire show though isn't it james i mean this radio station could be called pointless arguments with twats you know pat radio you could call it a little bit like a fig leaf designed to disguise something uglier because you can reduce the costs of asylum applications overnight by letting asylum applicants work and earn, earn, earn a crust and even pay perhaps some taxes and the cost of sending them to rwanda if there are five people on the plane tonight, it's going to be one hundred thousand pounds per capita. Fucking hell! Can't they go to a, Can't they go via EasyJet? So how does that save us money? But that's assuming those people that, that are arriving in this country without any paperwork. You keep saying those 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 fucking paperwork. Fucking bureaucratic. Arriving without any paperwork. So what? What, what do we do? This Iranian fellow. This Iranian policeman presumably arrived with his Iranian passport and they're trying he to shoved up his ass properly deport him so again it's imagine not... having to look after your passport it's Iranian geezer who was a copper do you know how fucking much shit you've got to be in to be a copper in Iran and you're fucking running away one of those figures of speech that I keep hearing from people who seem to be desperately trying he turned up with a with a sailor a, another Iranian bloke on a motorbike another one in a fireman's outfit to, to sound well, that's not being about the bush, Jimmy. It, it, it's like a phrase that's used by people who are desperate to pretend they're not just racist. So what do we do with this Iranian police officer? He's got his passport with him. Why are you talking about people who haven't got any papers when he was supposed to be on the plane today? Well, once you've established who and what they are... Stop saying what they are! First, he needs to establish who and what they are. Well, that's what we do. That's the Is asylum you? application you? process. Yes. What do you think we do? And Take them at their word? Deported. You're not being deported. It, mate, his ticket was cancelled yesterday. If it wasn't for those lefty lawyers, he'd be in Rwanda tonight. Mm. They're not deporting them. What they're actually doing is moving them off country. Moving them off country? Isn't that literally the definition of deporting? Into a state. As opposed to, we're, we're exporting. We're outsourcing. Yeah. Safe place while they... A safe place! That's the best we could do. Fucking Rwanda. You go through their process mm. of seeking asylum in this country. Yeah, and if it succeeds, no, Jim, you've misunderstood that as well. If, if the application... Thank God, this geezer's in the military. Thank God we're not at war. If it succeeds... Then... Are we? I can't, I can't remember. You stay in Rwanda, Jim. No, they have Well, that's not what my understanding. My understanding I don't, is that mate, with respect, I don't care what your understanding is. Oh, I wipe a fucking big, hairy, fucking lesbian nun's ass with your understanding, is what James O'Brien is actually saying. I deal in the facts. If the application is successful, they stay in Rwanda. So your whole support for this scheme is based upon ignorance. I, I wouldn't say that at all, James. Oh, well, well, wouldn't you? Well, doesn't really mean too much, that does it? Well, what would you say? How would you describe thinking something is true that categorically isn't? What word do you prefer? Because I'm keen to be generous. Well, I think you, you're telling me now something that is different to what I've, I've been instructed about. You've been instructed. He's going to blame this on some fictional fucking, you know, some some fictional person who's told him this, who and, and who doesn't exist, and who, when questioned, he won't fucking name. She is the fact well, who that instructed they're, they're, you, Jim? Well, process are part of my job. Process is a part of my job. What does that mean? A process is a part of every job. I used to be a fucking chef. Guess what? We had a process too. Get food, put it in oven, take it out. So that... So, yeah, who instructed yeah. you that the people who successfully apply for asylum in Rwanda get flown straight back to Britain? No, they, they, have, they have a right. 
then if they've given no they don't Jim British so but who instructed you this because if this is something that people in the British military yes they, we drop them off in Rwanda and say don't worry when your forms go through we'll be right back sit tight are being instructed about and it's categorically wrong I'm 100% confident of that we've got quite a big story on our hands and I'll have to alert the news desk so who told you that the successful applicants could come back to Britain James I can't go into that Not to the here. Oh, you have to, Jim. Seriously, it's all right. I'll tell you the secret tab. So why? So yeah. So who told you that, James? Who, who told you that nonsense? Or have you just humiliated yourself on national radio? Can't it be both? No, not at all. And so who told you that? You don't get to decide that one, Jim. Perhaps James. Who told you, Jim? To some of your your colleagues. Poss possibly, I do, Jim. But I'm listening to you. What? How about this? How about you look it up? It's in law. You don't need to get the information from someone. I'm listening to you at the moment. So who, t who gave you this false information upon which you based your entire support? He got it from a website called jimsarsole.com forward slash whoops. Racist policy. It's not, James, it's not a racist policy. Mate, you didn't know what the policy was until I told you three minutes ago. How can you even have an opinion on it? Well, I've been told the policy. By is who? Very different. Who told you that? My superiors. No. My superiors. Are you lying? I'm not lying. James. Okay, so who told you that successful applications in Rwanda? You, you just give me the general fucking melt it. Sort of job description of what they do or, or, or the rank. James, this is just coming down through paper. It just comes down. You know what the military's like, James. It's all very vague. You know, just paper just floats down from the ceiling. Working how, how, can, can I see how the paperwork? No, you can't see the paperwork. Because it doesn't... You see, do you hear how he was laughing when he said that? No, <laughs> you can't see the paperwork. Exists, Jim. Nor can you. Paper. It's imaginary paperwork. <laughs> James, listen. I have listened. <laughs> That's the problem, Jim. In this next video, Ian Dale, yes, the hills have eyes here, he is going to be talking to a guy who is apparently a clear Russian sympathiser. Like vodka. Well, 20 past nine, we're talking about the comments by James Heapy, the Defence Minister, about Ukraine being perfectly entitled to attack targets inside Russia. Do you agree with him? Sebastian is in Fulham. Hello, Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian. Mm. Jim. Hey, good evening, Ian. Hi, what would you like to say? Well, I, I think uh, it was totally irresponsible of this man. Um, thank you. I think it was totally irresponsible of this man. He does not sound Russian to me, and neither does he sound like he's from Fulham. I don't know where he's from, but he sounds, I bet he's got diplomatic immunity. Responsible clearly on orders uh, to do so. Uh, Dude, people in Ukraine do not take orders from the defence minister in this country. People in this country don't take orders from the people in charge. Fuck them. Um, but I just think that a lot of these guys, they don't realise that sending these poor Ukrainians into... As, as cannon fodder against the Russians. Oh, this is concern trolling of the highest order, you know that. ...who clearly are much stronger on the ground. Um, we might be winning the information war within our own echo chambers. Uh, oh, echo then... chambers. Anyone to, any, take a shot when someone says, any time a caller says echo chambers, big red flag right there. It's pure projection. He's on the ground. The Russians have absolutely cleaned up. They've got superior firepower, and their strategy hasn't been to... Occupy. It's been in Soviet Russia. Ukraine cleans you. Need to encircle and to wait it out. In circle, they're just in circling. They've just surrounded so Ukraine, like the who's in Whoville. We say supply by train, and that just supply by train. And um, one of your uh, Bit weird. one of the last speakers was talking about. Uh, I think the little second lady was asking why they haven't targeted all the ammunition that we're sending to none of well, that. that would be immense, wouldn't it? If you target the ammunition, it's just going to blow up. I know. Stuff is getting through. This is mostly propaganda. Uh, anything that comes how, through... How do you know that? ...taken out. Really? How do you know that? This, this, oh, this, this, this is going to be a good answer. live in the echo chamber. Let's I don't live in the echo chamber, do you? So you just stand there... You stand in a field shouting at no bugger. Just say that. 
Yeah. Let's just say that. No, tell us where you get your information from. See, this is the type of conspiracy theorist who doesn't, who, who isn't like sort of brainwashed or been led astray or just ignorant. He he actually he just wants to believe this shit, right? Because he wants to feel smug. He wants to feel like he wants to sit there at a dinner party or around, you know, in any in any environment where there's people, a fucking bus stop, right, and a fucking all of mirrors, and feel like the person who's there who knows something other people don't know. So he's not going to tell you where he gets his information because then other people will go there and he won't be special. Either that or on some level he knows that if he tells them where he gets it from, right, it's going to be fucking embarrassing. He says, where do you get your information from? And he says, fucking like drinking with Bob or some shit. Do you live then? No, well, I mean, there's different ways to get this information. There are different ways to get information. Are there really? I just get memes Bluetoothed into my fucking head. You can either rely on mainstream, well, mainstream sources. I'm telling you now, you can re- rely on mainstream sources, or you have your own sources who are on the ground over there. Oh, your own sources on the ground. Oh, how very gauche. I'm sorry, I, you know, I didn't realise, was. you got your own source on the ground. Ooh, la-dee-da. I don't have that, I'm afraid. They're telling you what's going on, you know, in real time. There's in real guys. time? Oh, fantastic, because I need that. Because it's well known fact that when you're on the ground, you know, in a war zone, in an entire country, you know everything that happens instantly, like the Borg. And the first thing you're going to do is text your, that Sebastian in Fulham. Because he's like, because you, cause you're, you, you're on Fiverr or some shit. Well, which are covered... <clears throat> On, on, on channels like open source channels like YouTube. Example. Open source channels like YouTube. YouTube is not a channel, my friend. It's a way you can't sit there and say channel on YouTube. YouTube's a. Do you know what else is on YouTube? Every fucking mainstream news outlet, mate. Right? BBC, Sky News, CNN. They've all. They're all on YouTube. So you can't say YouTube. It's like where do you get the information from? Oh, the telly. Uh, who are very, very uh, well-known people who, um, who well also known. give their own accounts of it. But my point is... He says Paul, Joseph and Watson. You know, you can't... But how, how, do you, how, do you judge that, that, how do you judge that they are providing accurate information? Uh, because, because, well, mate... Let's put it this way. I mean, if, if, if Russia was in such a... Let's put it this way. No, answer the fucking question. State. And they, Which you, know, you never do... You know, everybody would like us to believe that the Russians are losing this war and they're losing badly. Um, why is it that it is us who keep on pumping out all this, you know, uh, sort of false flag information about chemical weapons and all sorts of things? It's always us who are pumping this stuff out, and it's very. Sorry, I, I, I don't recall any accusation that chemical weapons have been used. You no, know, it keeps coming out of Victoria Newland and Anthony Blinken, and, and you know they keep talking about the likelihood. That's not a false flag. Talking about the likelihood of something, right, or the hypothetical of something, out, is not a false flag, mate. Right, you can call it fear mongering if you want. You can say that it's you know it's it's you know flat fanning the flames of whatever you like. You, you can even say it's highly highly unlikely or misguided, whatever. But you can't call it a false flag. A false flag actually has to happen. When you know we look at Mariupol, for example, uh, you know the Russians have circled it, and uh, they they've circled it as a, as a style base that's there. Which clearly there's, there, there's some some people are very you know some very important people in that in that place that have been circled and they won't come circled, out. Circled, mate. Even circled. Given passage to come out, and yet it was us <laughs> saying that you know, they, you, they've you, been you, circled. They've gotten the surrounded. Have often said yes, we'll give you passage, and then people try to take advantage of that, and then they're shot dead. What source is that? What, 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 what source is that? Hold on a moment, moment, moment. Let me give you a little bit of advice here. As someone who's been doing this a long time, you cannot just read or listen to the news source that you think or, or believe is telling the truth. You have to listen to all of them. Because if you don't know what everyone's saying, you can't criticise or know one way. So when he says, you know, you should know what news sources have been saying that people have been shot under false pretenses, right? You should know that. Well, 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 that's, that's well, we've, seen, we've, seen, we've seen the evidence. We've seen the evidence on the BBC News. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to laugh now. <laughs>
Is this referring to the BBC News? That is, sorry, Ed, can I make the point? Go on. Is it the same BBC News that's been, that was telling us that there were chemical weapons attacks in Syria, which were proven later to have been staged? Or the same BBC News that was very actively propagating that there were weapons of mass destruction? They didn't propagate that there were weapons of mass destruction. They were reporting on what they were being, on what the people in charge who, who were supposed to know this stuff were told. That's still news. You can't accuse someone of lying, right? You can't accuse any journalist or media outlet of lying when they're reporting someone else's lies. In, in Iraq. And, you know, went on, you know, pretty much... And so what you're saying is, if you can catch, if you can get what you've given, you know, and one of them ain't even an example of a lie, but let's fuck it. If you can get two examples of a media outlet being wrong, that cancels them out. So you have to have a 100% record. You get one shot. To the natives and, and months and months of proving that they were weapons of mass well, First of all, first of all, there were uh, there were chemical weapons used in. Uh, no, they weren't. They were full of porridge. We can debate Iraq all, all you like, but that was what nearly twenty years ago. Now, are sure, you seriously sure. telling me that you you would believe random YouTube observers are not journalists? that work for the BBC. And yes, Ian, and you know what, you should, that might bother you, that might sound shocking to you, but believe me, if you want to know what, why fucking so, certain parts of this world have been going down the shitter, it's because of fucking cunts like this, who believe some random twat called fucking, you know, called Black Hammer Jew Gasser 1488 over, you know, and they, go, they, they, think, they think memes count as news. Got the filmed evidence of these attacks? Yes. Yes. Because they really? have films. But yes, because they also have, they also have... Well, they have films of people not being buried. Well, that's not difficult, is it? Evans. Look up Eva Bartlett. Look up, look up um, Alexander, uh, you know, the, 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 the Duran. You know, they're very, very good. And they've got evidence on that. You know, these, these guys are, are, are proper investigators of journalists. Proper investigators in, in the echo chamber, pumping out. In the echo chamber. Oh, oh, him in his fucking echo, echo chamber. chamber. Oh, please. Echo You're chamber. embarrassing yourself now. Somebody says here, who is this? Again, that is pretty much the MO of this radio station. It could be called Twats Embarrassing Themselves. T B T T E T. Fellow Lord Hawhaw, because that's what you're coming across as. Uh, are you seriously suggesting that the Russians are. Uh, I mean, surely if they were winning, they said they would take Kiev in, four t in two days. Uh, they withdrew from Kiev, and now they've moved on to, they've regrouped, and they've yeah. gone to they, the... They withdrew from Kiev, and now they're all garlic. ...that region. Are you seriously telling me that you think the Russian invasion, or don't you, or do you call it a special operation? I don't know. No, he calls it a Beano. Do you think the okay. Russian invasion of Ukraine... Hang, well, I haven't asked it yet. Do you think the Russian invasion of Ukraine... He doesn't care what you're saying, Ian. He's got his answers pre-prepared. He's not going to answer the question. He's gone as the Russians thought it would. Well, the second uh, call he had in made a good point that nobody has that playbook, for starters. You know, we can pretend we know yeah, what Putin's the playbook. sort of plan was. And certainly so it's all gone swimming. 40, 000, with 40,000 men to take a city to the side with, with, three, with three million people. That no, no, the British used to fucking control India and China, mate. And we said two geezers on penny farthings with big moustaches and a flag and said, Oi, you lot work for us now. Zip it, right? 40,000 geezers, armed fucking soldiers, could probably do that. Hang on. They had, they had, they had 150,000 soldiers on the borders of Ukraine. They had a 40-mile convoy of vehicles heading towards Kiev. Uh, the Ukrainians smashed that convoy. Uh, we've seen all the pictures of them. Uh, and we've got statistics, which presumably yeah. you, you don't believe. Yeah, from the end, you've got your echo chamber. Generals killed. From echochamber.com. You think that's all fiction, do you? I think it's fiction to believe that 40,000 Russian troops can take a city the size of Kiev. Well, where would you get 40,000 from? There were, were 150,000 of them. Ian, that, that's what was deployed to Kiev. The rest were deployed to different parts of the east to, to shore up the Donbass, to, to go down towards Crimea and to encircle Mariupol. What oh, we, you know the fucking playbook, don't you? What we're talking about is the 40,000 that anchored the... What, standing army of a hundred thousand. Standing troops. army. They're just standing. They're just there. They just stand. Ukraine, They're just anchoring. Don't, don't, don't trouble yourself, attack. folks. We just and then all the Russians were doing were, were anchoring them there. 
say that they could actually force their attack on the Donbass okay. and get rid of the, the, the right-wing battalions okay. and of the, the, the sector K and all the rest. What, what, what about the war crimes that have clearly there, been it? committed, the, the graves that have been dug and civilians are being shoved in them? You, you presumably also don't believe any of that. You think it's Western propaganda? It's part of the war. I mean, propaganda... It's part of war. Oh, here we go. It's part of war. If Russia does it, no, do it's a war crime. It's a, no, 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 no. There is no accusation. Well, you, you think it's fair enough. By Ukrainian forces, or indeed anybody else, apart there from is. Russian forces. Do you mean because we've banned anything that says something that's against the narrative? Um, do you have any information about Ukrainian war? No, you don't, right? I've been shagging your mum for ten years. You haven't got any information that fucking disproves that. So I guess you're fucked, ain't you? And I know that she fuck and and I know that she doesn't do it. She, she does it because she likes me, right? She doesn't charge me as much as the other blokes. Is that what you're saying? Because if you're saying that only the only truth is what we're allowed to be published, then okay, fine. Oh, this guy is it. such a fucking contrarian douchebag. Oh. War crimes that we, we we choose not to see a, a year before. Russia, I asked you about uh, I asked you about Russian war crimes. Do you believe that I've they've never met a uh, nice South Africa? Well, for eight years before February 2022, no, answer the, the question. Ukrainians were killing Russians. In, answer in the, the question. Answer the question. Uh, Do you believe I that Russia has committed any? No, you're crimes? not. Do you believe war crimes can only be no, no, don't, an answer, don't answer a question with a question. I want an answer. Do you believe? any of the reports that Russia has committed war crimes? I believe that... You don't, do you? You don't. I, I, I Just believe say that it. Ukrainians... Well, no, you know, I'm not asking you about Ukraine. I'm not asking you about Ukrainians because you are a clear Russian sympathiser. You are promulgating Russian propaganda, which about five times during this call, I've wondered whether I should even continue with it, but I have. Because for the content... Because I think it's important that people realise that there are people like you who are quite happy to promulgate enemy propaganda. You don't, you don't want to hear the other side of the conversation. He's done nothing, but you, you ain't got nothing. You're sitting there going, well, we haven't seen... Yeah, yeah, no, they won't allow us to show show us these things. What things? That's cowardly. So let me make that point. You're April, you're on the radio April, talking, April, motherfucker. So why should I? I've, I've already answered it. I've now you're on know. my YouTube channel. You don't get more I've fucking alternative you, media than this, motherfucker. Russia has committed war crimes, and you won't say yes or no. Well, now you're asking me to prove something that just that. No, we weren't. Fuck this guy. This next geezer is someone who proudly proclaims himself to be anti-woke and James O'Brien is going to ask him what does that mean? And in the immortal words of Darman it doesn't it doesn't go well. James, how you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, I'm anti-woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm anti-woke. Yeah, yeah. Is it in your Twitter profile? Along with your pronouns. It just says twat. I don't have Twitter, I've got Instagram. Babe. I don't have Twitter, I've got Instagram, mate. No, I don't have Twitter. Don't do Twitter. I've got Instagram, mate. Because I'm essentially a paedophile. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, what does it mean to me? People have different... Um... Oh, for fuck's sake, already he's... Like, no, not what does it mean to you. What does it mean? What does it mean to everyone? It can't be... What it means to you... Interpretations of anti-woke or... Wokenism. Wokenism. Uh, oh yeah, Wokenism. Oh yeah, old Woken. Wokenism. Yeah. Old Wokenism. That old religion. Terry Wokenism. It means people who are basically cunts. Seek offence where it doesn't exist. They look for the time. Of... Do you know what the silly thing is about this? This idea that there are people who seek offence. Like it's a like it's in don't get me wrong. There are loads of people who do. I I'm not going to deny that there are people who get offended at shit that they really don't have to, or that really is not worth getting offended. You know, that's my 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 opinion. But it's not like it's so easy to find something. It's like you don't like you have to struggle or work hard to find something that is actually worth getting upset about. Little thing and pin on it and put a pin on it. would be anti that wouldn't they no it's just a bit like driving in a bus lane but not your full cars not in the bus lane it's just one wheel okay look already this guy's fucking this guy's falling apart right because right 
he's given some definition which is unreal. Basically, for me, woke. The definition of woke is a person who is basically a whinging big gay lord, right? And and that's not fucking useful because there are people who actually call themselves woke. It's not just it's not just a slur or an epithet. It's actually a fucking you know. It's actually a a, a descriptor, right? So you can't sit there and say and say that. It's like saying you know. It's like asking someone what, what do you think a Jew is and they say well for me a Jew is a person who is basically a covetous baby eater you know it doesn't it doesn't work like that right uh, you've got to actually you know and now he's, the first thing example he comes up with is one that doesn't exist it's like driving in a bus lane but it's not your full car it's just one wheel right right what well, the bus lane's that big mate right the wheel of your car is that fucking big right but no one's doing that, is it? No one's complaining, right? There are no hordes of people dogpiling someone. No one's getting cancelled, right? On fucking... On get, or getting banned from TikTok because they drove their car one wheel into the bus lane. Ever, right? So, you you already... You know, if I were you, I, I would have gone for a real-world example. What's in the bus lane? You've lost me now. Well, he's in the bus lane, James. He's just told you. So, so being yeah, so, so, so someone, someone, someone who, who's hypersensitive and pedantic is, is that's annoying and boring for everybody. Maybe we should work in examples. So when you come across, when 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 and where do you come across? Remember these definitions; they will be handy. Foreshadowing. The sort of wokeness to which you are so passionately opposed. Well, apart from in the bus lane. Apart from in the bus lane. <laughs> 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 that's a reference to my job. I'm just laughing because you know it's not funny. It's just, I'm laughing because you know I'm what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to you know buy some time so I can think of something because we are only one minute into this video and what you you lot watching at home might not realise you know and and what and but what you know what this prick is starting to realise is he ain't got nothing. Right? That's how, and that's the terrifying thing about this about all of the calls, LBC calls, is it's not that these people ring up and confidently without, you know, with total, utter, you know, confidence, complete and utter, so, you know, no fucking doubt in their mind. Talk about issues they know less than fucking diddly shit about. It's the fact that it takes one, maybe sometimes two, basic cursory questions for them to just collapse like a fucking souffle if you open the oven too quickly. I used to work in local authority. I'm, I'm now self-employed. But... Local authority? Oh, there's a fucking great... You're now self-employed. Oh, good. That's, yeah. I wonder why that... I wonder why that is. You're now self-employed. Is because, you know... You're the kind of arsehole who would try, you know, you, you would, you know, you'd be at home working and then you'd stop and masturbate and you'd try and sue yourself for sexual harassment because you think that's funny. When I worked in local authority... And what is local authority? Again, with the vague jobs. What is it? I've never heard anyone. What's your job? I'm a local authoritarian. You didn't get on with your work. There was a few hours a week dedicated to these sort of woke agendas. Yeah, go on. Uh, you know, going on these sort of courses. These sort of courses, these kind of, like, he doesn't, he's trying not to be specific, is he? Because, you know. Um, and these internal training courses and. Well, like, what, 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 everybody, do, every job has stupid bullshit training. It's like that episode of The Office in season two, in series two of The British Office, you know? Everyone has to do it. You have to sit there and listen to absolute, you know, I, you know I, I'm, I've worked in kitchens as a chef, right? So I've, I've done, you know, the health and safety fucking test you have to take is literally like you find mouse and or rat droppings on the floor. Do you A, make them into a casserole, B, flick them at the customers, or C, you know, clean them up and report them and get to the, you know, it's the most obvious shit. But that's how stupid people are. What were they it teaching? was all very insincere. It's all very... Oh, I see. So if they meant it, you wouldn't mind. Fucking bollocks. Well, you might have been. You can't speak for anybody else. No, but... The, the so trainer, what were they teaching? These what, what, tra what? So these trainers... What sort of... Well, these trainers, right? Like these trainers would come in. 
These trainers have hold these courses. Yeah. They don't hold the courses, mate. It's not them. It's not like they're fucking... They're not like travelling salesmen. And, you know, they're being... I know how much they're paid. They're paid an absolute fortune. Oh, fuck off, are they, bot? Oh, yeah, the old... The old woke training at work grift. Yeah, oh, that's a good old racket, isn't it? Yeah, Why don't you do it then? You seem like an, you're an insincere prick. Well, okay, that's just envy. So, what were the courses? What were they? What were they designed to do? Oh, I'm very envious. Yeah, I'm, I'm very envious. Like, again, I'm just buying time. I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to sort of like you know keep jumping around because I don't want to actually answer the question. I know you are, but, but what were the courses designed to do? What were they training you to do? What were, what were they doing? Uh, I think they were designed... I think... ...to stifle rational discussion and debate. Oh, fucking hell, no one's had a rational... No one's had an irrational... No one wants to even look at you. God, even your imaginary friends fucking didn't want to talk to you. When you were a kid, you were probably tested for autism and they found out it was just everyone else didn't want to fucking talk to you. Well, they put that on the agenda. They put that on the door. You want to talk about insincere? You can't even be honest about. Just like tell us what they what what they're claiming. You know. So what were they what were they designed to do? What what sort of courses are we talking well, about? Is. Well, it's white genocide. I mean, I mean, not not that, not that, not that. Am I in an echo chamber? Oh, echo chamber! Yeah, no, you're not in an echo chamber. You don't even know what an echo chamber is, do you, you daft cunt? That's where people just sit there and agree with each other all the time. He's asked you the same question again because you haven't given him a fucking answer. Well, clearly not, mate, no. Do you know what that means? No! <laughs> no, I don't. Be <laughs> no, I don't. No, you're laughing. You don't actually, do you? You don't know what it is. You don't know what an echo chamber is, do you? So me. what were the courses... Uh, uh, oh, but you're going to tell me. You've done nothing but tell everyone else what your definition of it, and it's completely and utterly twisted and bullshit, right? You have you haven't been honest about a single answer, and now you're going to sit there and scoff at the at the notion that James O'Brien is going to tell you what something means, when in fact he's not. He's asking you, because you rang the station. Officially designed to do. Right, so... Right, uh, so... Uh, we go on these courses. We, we go on these... We go... We, we go on the courses like you know we get up right with our legs right we'll go for it yeah and all be in a room and and be a, we be that there's like a room like with four walls and a door he come out Stu Tom O'Connor right like just uh, he come out right and uh, on stage and he would uh, he'd say are oh, you a sardine and it would be some topical discussion oh topical discussion um, that's what about I'm about something that's happened lately. A topical discussion about something that's happened lately. You have rung LBC, leading Britain's conversation, the number one talk radio, fucking whose whole thing is having topical discussions about stuff that's happened lately. You have voluntarily rung it up so you can complain about the fact that when you were at work, they made you have discussions about topical things that had happened lately. You utter bastard! So what would happen? And what would happen, right? Yeah. The, so, so what would happen? So he come out, Stu, right? Um, yeah. The, the, the powers that be. The powers that be! There's another fucking wanky fucking... We would say, oh, we don't... You know, oh, oh, oh! This has happened in America. Oh, oh. this has happened... This! Mm. This has happened in America. Yes, and everyone on a course, for example. Yes, that's what they did. He's so full of shit. He's even fit. The power of it. Ooh, this has happened in America. What? This? Yes, this thing here. This event that we're not going to give any details of, but it's happened. So everyone who works here must now go on a course. You wouldn't be able to fuck God know what, what courses you would be on. You fucking couldn't pass a urine test. Oh. I don't want to quote examples. I don't want to quote examples. He means George Floyd. That's what he's talking about, but he doesn't want to say it. Because he's a bitch. Really? You kind of have to. I can't. I, I, can't, I can't. You can. You can. It's just, you open your mouth and you say what you're talking about. You tell us what you mean. Right? That's how, that's how, that, you know, to not do that is 
you know, kind of, you know, if, to, for you to choose to not divulge details about what you actually mean is kind of stifling rational debate and discussion, isn't it? All debate and discussion. You can't debate anyone who don't tell you nothing. Well, that's the point, isn't it, though? So something that actually happened. That's all. Well, you bring, what, bring one up and I'll give you... What do you mean, bring one up? It's your story! Bring one up! No, 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 because no, you're telling me what it means. Go on. And the example... Go on, go on, Dave. What, you're scared? You're scared to fucking tell me, give an example of, of something... Uh, this is where he's hoping he would say George Floyd, and he could say, "Oh, okay, then you know it wasn't that, but it was something, you know, because it's George Floyd." There's these courses that you went on, and the rooms that you sat in, and the and the speeches that you and Tom O'Connor comes out listened to. So just tell me what they were about. Can you think of one? Oh God, let me think. Of one. What do you mean? Let you think of one? You have you. This is you are sufficiently pissed off about this to the point where you have rung up LBC, James O'Brien, the number one talk radio show, right? The king, right? It's what you're looking at here, right? The most, the most exciting, groundbreaking, game-changing, dynamic broadcaster in all media, and James O'Brien. Uh, yeah, and he's struggling to think. He's not. I can't believe you couldn't even think of a made-up one. You must have known this is where the con You put the conversation down this road. Just say George Floyd, mate. Say when that hero cop, Derek Chauvin, was stitched up for murdering that felonious fentanyl negro bloke. Of course he's still fucking there. It's his show. What's he gonna do? Hang up on you? Because he, you know, he's he knows this is he's not gonna hang up on you, mate. You're gonna have to fucking run away. Yeah. Okay. Um, Are you still there? What is it like? You know, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up, James. No, you... But let's say, for example, a um, you know, preventing barriers to staff progression. That so happened in America, did it? Religions, cultures, races, etc. You... Preventing barriers to stuff, trying to prevent barriers to staff progression. That's what the courses were about. And you objected to this. You're going to give me an example of something that happened in America. George that, that didn't yeah. happen. No, no, I was just, I won't bring that up. I think. It's George Floyd. Well, why not? Deal. Why don't you bring that up? Because it's George. Because I think most of your listeners know what I'm referring to. Well, then you might as well say it if it's not going to shock us, is it? I have not got a clue. He knows. Okay. So, so close. Close. Just keep an eye on the tape, the, the emergency tape that kicks in when we have periods of silence that, that, that go over. <laughs> Again, I'm laughing to try and lighten the mood because I'm still trying to think of something. So, so just tell us, everybody already knows, Carl. So just tell us what it is you object to having courses on when you worked at a local authority. Well, I just think it's really insincere. Oh, for God's sake, I fucking go pick my nose with what you think's insincere. I've had stains on my fucking underpants that had more sincerity and fucking integrity than you you fucking but just you know it's not even the fact that you're a it, you know it's not it's not just it, it's not even the fucking fact that you're an ignorant prick that i fucking can't stand who's just you know who just doesn't like you know who, who, who doesn't even know why he doesn't like something right it's the fact that you're such a coward if you'd come out here and just said you know i've got more respect for a fucking for for a, for a, you know a, 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 for a neo Nazi marching down the street, you know chanting Jews will not replace us and fucking you know with a swastika tattoo on his forehead, then I have for you because at least I know where he stands. At least he's got some conviction. Hello, I can have a conversation with that geezer. I can't have one with you because you won't say nothing because you're a fucking coward. That's the worst part about you. If you actually had some fucking, if you know, you know, you think, you think that you're, you know, you're so scared. What are you scared of? Because, you know, you hate the people 
You you hate people who are fucking who who would fucking be offended or object to you know the things that you're going to say or that you're too scared to say, wouldn't you? You you don't like those people. They're bad people. They're easily offended, whiny. So why do you care what they get fucking offended by? Yeah, but we can't really know what that means until you tell us what it was, can you? Mm. So what, what, what was it, mate? Seems I'm a bit scared to go down the rabbit hole. Oh, I'm a bit scared. Oh, mm. You fucking spineless, ballless, gutless, brainless, fucking titless, arseless, fucking wanky little fucking piece of shit you streak of frozen urine you massive you pinworm riddled pile of sputum you worthless fucking namby pamby git how dare you say i'm a bit scared oh what are you scared of right have some fucking have some conviction Believe in what you're fu- Do you believe in what you're saying? Because I'm getting the impression that deep down, right, it's not that you're scared, it's that you, what, you know, the only reason you would be scared is that you know that if they label you, so, if you get called something, you know what you're going to get called if you say what you think. And you know that on some level, on some level in you, part of you, inside, you know that they're right. And you know that you're wrong. But you're too full of your fucking, you're too fucking full of your own macho bullshit. You can't even just stand up and say, this is what I think. Do you know what I get called every fucking day? Do I give a shit? No. Do you know why? Because the people who are doing it are people whose opinions I couldn't give fucking two fucking jo- bolts of cocks not out of a dead donkey's dick from. I don't care what they think of me. I don't mind being hated by people who are wrong. Just to be I've been accused of being that. Are you? Do you want me to list off the things I've been accused of? That are not true? No. Do I sit here and go, oh, I don't want to say anything. Do you see me holding back? No, because I believe in what I'm saying. Every word that comes out of my fucking mouth is 100% sincere, right? I'm better than you, is what I'm saying. You didn't ring in by accident, did you? This is with now and I. Hello, I've rung up James O'Brien by mistake. Are you the farmer? No, of course not. No. So you rang in to answer a question about what anti... I am yeah, anti-woke, so you, you said. said what, so what, yeah, what does that mean? Said, you said it here is It's some... almost like this is like one of those calls. You know when a, a woman phones up the police, you know, about domestic violence, but her husband's in the room, so she has to like order a pizza. It's like he's dancing round it. He's like he's saying, James, help me. I don't know what to do. Examples, and I said, just name one. And you said, what does it mean to you? So yeah. No, it- that was the start of the conversation, cunt. Say George Floyd. Yeah. Say his name. It means to me people that actively seek a sense where it doesn't exist. Yes. But, but, but then, if that's the case, why not just say what's going to offend people? Because we'll find it somewhere else. I'm offended by your fucking inability or your lack of fucking actual character. They just stand up for fucking stand up and you know say what you mean. And what were the courses? Well, various courses. Yeah, so well, various you... courses. Okay, no, again. For well, example, then. Well, preventing staff progression. Um, you know, people. What do you think that means? Well, just stop them progressing in their career. So they were teaching you how to stop progressing in your career? Well, he's self-employed now. That's not done well. Person. He's a window I cleaner. I suspect you didn't need any lessons. No, I didn't. I went to work to work. Yeah. I didn't went, went to work to work. work. What, what were you talking about? You get paid for these training courses. You know that. Oh, so these were courses encouraging people to behave and be nice that you object to. That's what you mean by work. That's all my other callers have already no, I said. Think, I think we learn this when we grow up. What re- alternative reality do you fucking live in? Where people, where you know, where most people are nice to each other. Maybe you should join Twitter. Well, some of us no, do. I grew up in London. Well, I grew up in London, a place well known to never have any conflict or social unrest. Very lucky, you're already very nice and well behaved. What about people who aren't? Surely they benefit from these courses, Carl. Well, 
you know, they, they are the ones that should be marginalised. But why do people... You want to marginalise people now, isn't that woke? You want to marginalise people who aren't very nice. That's what everyone else has told me is woke. No, I want the people that are nasty and horrible. Yeah. You want to cancel them, didn't you? You want them to be cancelled. Marginalise them, get rid of that's them. Woke, that's what woke means. You're pro woke, mate. You're not anti woke. Your council tax shouldn't pay to sell. Oh, it's council tax. It works out about one sixteenth of a penny per person. Why? Well, you need to tell me what the course was. What's the course? The bins to be collected. You, you on the contrary, I want I want local authorities to. The to, bins are being collected. You can't be running a way that is forward thinking. And I will happily, personally, pay money to send you on three courses a day, just you. Progressive, and if some people, not you, because you don't need these courses, but if some people are, are holding back the rest of the organisation, then I think giving them some training is a wonderful idea. Go on, just tell everyone the thing that they already know that you're talking about that you're not prepared to say out loud, because otherwise well, people yeah. might think you're a bit woke, you're frightened of causing offence, are you? Isn't that what woke means? And listen to it. Listen to him now. This is the fucking nail in his coffin. I've been, I have been cowed into silence. You started this call by talking about how you, you know, you, by talking about how people who are woke are just fucking. They just look for offence, and you know, they're in the tiniest little thing, so they can you know, get get upset about it. And here you are. You rang the n number one show on the most popular radio show, and you're now a viral YouTube clip. Right, and you and and you you are now not only by the general definition, as James O'Brien has pointed out. Well done, James, a colleague of mine. All right, he not only are you woke by the general standard definition, you are woke by your own definition. And now you're crying about kowtowed in the silence. You chose to keep your mouth shut, and if you choose to be silent, that's on you. It's on nobody else. Right. That's it. I'm done with this guy. Well, folks, there are more LBC clips to come, but, uh, you know, that's going to be for another video. Until then, I'm Dick Coughlin. Please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, support on Patreon, etc., etc. And uh, remember, where there's no sense, there's no feeling.